and welcome to you both. Um, first of all, Sean, what's your reaction to these government recommendations? Do you think they go far enough? I think it's really important that companies like Facebook are being held accountable for these kinds of things because I think it's not really good enough that they're just saying they're a platform for people to say anything. Hello, my name's Sean Elvin and here's your roundup of today's news across Kent. A freak storm hit Kent in the early hours of this morning, damaging many businesses and homes across the county. Oh, that's really cold! <laughs> it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. It's horrible, isn't it? Look at you, yeah, it's it's very very snow on you though. Like, you yes, know. I know. I couldn't see very much as well because I had the snow all around me. I think it's really good that Maxim are running an event like this. They're recognising what people are doing, that people are still reading the news, even in this sort of fake news and people expecting their news for free atmosphere, really. Is there been a dramatic shift in the type of stories you're being asked to kind of cover or look for? I think, you know, it definitely has got a, you know, a heavy sort of coronavirus focus, I think, even if it's not necessarily directly about, you know, information or like really sort of hard, straight news. You know, it's like a lot about being receptive and being open-minded and yeah. say, I don't know, somebody like me decided they wanted to be a medium, yeah. if that's such a thing, what kind of advice would you give me or what recommendations would you give me? What I would say from the offset, where you're concerned, if mediumship wasn't really meant for you, no matter how you how much you try to train and develop, it wouldn't happen. Since um, we Kent Live published the story yesterday, a number of readers from around Tom Wells and even beyond have got in touch with us saying that they either recognised him, um, knew about him, or were concerned that they may even have been one of his victims. When I sort of wrote the story, I was a bit shocked. İslam ve camiler hakkında olumlu bir haber yaptığım halde insanlar... This week I've been raising money for charity by living off one pound a day. Here's how I got on. So it's Sunday evening and I've just come out of Tesco and I've just done my food shop for the week. So my challenge begins in the morning. So the She Ventures. An all-female team. Hannah's going to be the pilot. Sean, Katie and Angie, the rest of the team. How do you navigate around all of that as a journalist? I think social media is really helpful for journalists now because they can obviously find out about things that they never would have known about before. But it's all about, you know, separating the fact from the fiction, really. And there's a lot of checks that journalists need to do to make sure that something is true. You know, things like you need to check who has actually tweeted something or written something on Facebook. Um, you want to see if there's some kind of official logo, like for example, on the 5-5 the five five post that you just said about, there was no kind of official logo. You want, need to go to those organisations, you know, you need to go to the NHS or the police or the emergency services to check what's being put out there.